Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Uh, today I want to show you the tools that I use to make this coffee table. This is probably one of my first log furniture um, pieces that I've made using some new tools. And I'm going to show you all the tools that I used and I'll show you what not to do, what I learned, and yeah, let's get started. Today we're back up on my mountain and I've been asked to build a coffee table. And I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm going to take two, two halves of a log and join them together and then make some legs. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. The first thing I do is cut a four foot log in half using my Husqvarna 445. Then I chip off the bark, and this is the wrong way to take the bark off. I'm using a hammer and a chisel, and it's just a hard way to, it's not an easy way, and I'm scraping it. That's just not the way. So right after figuring out that, I'm, that I don't have the right tool, I order an eight inch draw knife. And right here you can see this eight inch draw knife. Now I'm not gonna give you the, well, you can go in the description and find this particular one. It did work good, but it was made in China, and I don't like to recommend stuff made in China, so I would suggest getting one made in the USA. But this is what you need, a, a draw knife. And that peeled off the bark really nicely on, all, on, the, on the main log for the, for the coffee table top, and also for all the legs. So that's how I peeled off all the bark. After I get the bark pulled off, I, get a, I ordered a lumberjack tool, inch and a half uh, tenon, tenonizer uh, kit. It's a beginner kit and I'm glad I got it. The one thing I learned is to, you know, you, you don't want to use, you can't use over three inch size logs and you need to taper the ends. If you, when I first started out, I what the tenons weren't very center and the drill was jumping all over the place. But once I learned, like right here, you see it kind of jumps around. And what I learned is to take a grinder and to, to grind the ends first. Like this one's not tapered and it was hard to do. But if you look at the next one that I do, not this one, you'll see that I, 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 I actually grinded the end of that one and it went really easy. Yeah, so, so you really need to grind the ends and then they come out really. So that was a learning, learning curve. Once I get all the tenons cut, I then needed to drill the mortises for the tenons to go into. And the kit comes with the, the inch and a half mortise bit, a pretty nice bit. So I get out a Milwaukee drill and I drill all the, the female mortises for the tenons. And that went well. Um, I just, you know, I had to drill all of them. And then once I had the two sides drilled, I kind of uh, put it together and figured out the measurement for the long centerpiece and then cut that on my table, on my chop saw. I then tapered the ends of this long piece. So these are the two mortises that are going to hold the center log that's going to hold the whole leg thing together. And what I did is I made sure and grinded this centerpiece so that when I cut the tenon, it was easier. So if you look, there, the, it's tapered already. And watch how easy this this tool works. So tapering is the key to this tool, and the, and the, then the tenons go really really easy. So that was that was something I learned. Once I get this all figured out, I basically um, kind of figure out how I want the legs to lean and. Uh, I get it where I want it, and then I glue it all together. And there it is, the bottom all glued together. Now I gotta, now I basically glued the top on, and I made two, two pins uh, about an inch and a half diameter to connect the two logs together on the top. And then right here I was told to make the table a little shorter so I get my Bigfoot beam saw and I make a mark and the request was that it was 52 inches long so I cut both ends of it off. I love this beam saw. This beam saw is just I've had it for years and it's just really worked well. It's a big saw you got to be careful but it 
it does work really well. So I cut it down to the requested length. It's now 52 inches. I then, I need to sand this whole thing. So I need to sand all the edges and sand the legs and just clean off all the, you know, clean it up really good after being glued. I then spend, I spend some time sanding it. Log furniture is pretty interesting. I, um, you know, you wouldn't want it in a modern home, obviously, but if you have a log cabin up in the mountains, um, it's pretty, pretty interesting. So right here, I scrape off all the glue and I had a lot of glue to glue this together. Um, I did not want it coming apart. And I actually, when I glued it, I actually let it sit for two days because there's no nails or anything. And I didn't want to risk, uh, when I was sanding or pounding on it or doing, you know, whatever I was doing, I didn't want to risk it coming apart. So I let it sit glued for a couple of days. So right here, I'm scraping off all the glue that, um, was on it. And then I also start sanding, sanding it also, sanding the whole thing. I wasn't sure about my design, but after I flipped it over, I really liked it. Next up was to basically get ready to start um, epoxying it. So I get the whole place cleaned up, get some uh, construction paper, and get ready to do the epoxy. I'm going to do the top first. Now this particular product I highly recommend. This is called Super Clear and it's a it's a one-to-one -one mixture and right here i'm mixing um, i'm going to start out with 16 ounces and it's i'm just doing the two top logs epoxy and then the, it's going to be a two-tone look so the two logs on the top are going to be epoxied and then the bottom's going to be just a polyurethane so right here I mix it by hand and the key to this is to have your room temperature above 70. I usually have it about 75 and then um, I, I hand mix it for three minutes and it works perfect. Now these logs aren't very even so I, um, I did struggle a little bit doing the epoxy on these two logs. Now this is the seal coat so I'm just kind of getting as much on on it and then I'm going to let it sit overnight and then I'm going to sand it. Epoxy is always kind of a challenge. I, I've been learning all the time and the more I do it the better I get but it is it's a learning curve and one thing that I've learned about my own um, ability is I'll, I'll basically epoxy that whole top right now and then I'll let it sit overnight and then just sand it. I've tried, they say that you can put the second coat on like four or five hours later. And I've, I've actually been successful a couple times with that, but I've also failed a couple times at that. So, so now I just, I know that if I wait overnight and then I sand it the next day, it's, it's a sure thing. So I, that's the way I approach it. So I'm basically sealing the top and the, and the ends right now. And this is going to take multiple coats. This epoxy, I really like this epoxy, but you, you can't put it on too thick. And so what I'm doing is I'm just putting this first 16 ounces on, and then I'm going to let it sit overnight. And it's going to take a few, it, it actually takes me a few days to get this epoxy done. I torch it for the air bubbles and then just let it sit. The next day I flip it over and I use these little diamond triangles to raise it up. I thought that would help from getting any drips down, but the drips ended up, uh, I ended up having to sand off drips again. So this is the second day, and I'm going to do the bottom part of the log. And this is the first coat on the bottom of the log. I ended up doing two coats on the bottom of the log and three coats on the top of the log. Um, the reason I had to do three coats on the top of the log is when I did the second coat on the bottom of the log, it, it dripped and then I had to sand off the drips on the top of the log and then epoxy it again to make it 
um, give it that really nice clear finish. So right here, I'm just, you know, pouring the epoxy and, and uh, brushing it all over the bottom of this log. And it's not easy to epoxy a round thing because it wants to self-level and, and the epoxy just wants to run off. But it did work and I, um, I, learn, I learn every time I do any of this stuff, I learn something new. So, And uh, what I learned is just brush it on and do multiple coats until you're happy with the finish. There's not, you're not going to be able to do a, um, a thick tabletop pour on a round log, <laughs> that's for sure. Anyway, the next day I go to the second, I sand the top of the log again, and you can see all those drip marks. So I had to, I basically have to sand all these drip marks off of the top of the log and uh, prep it to do the, do the second coat on the top of the table the drip marks, and then sand the whole top, give it something. You want to make sure that the epoxy uh, sticks to it. If you try to do epoxy onto epoxy that hasn't been sanded, you might get delamination later. So I brush another coat on and uh, try to even it out as best as I can. This is the second coat, so I'm trying to get it on as thick as I can, and I'm kind of using a blotching method, and then I torch it, and then I let it sit overnight. The next day, I flip it back over, and I start on the second coat on the bottom. And basically, I sand it all, spray it all off, make sure there's no dust and stuff on there, and then proceed to... Uh, do another coat of epoxy on on this side. I had to sand quite a few drips from the top. You know, the top's going to run down to the bottom, so you got to sand all that off. And then I mix another batch up. This time I mix about 12 ounces. I always, you know, speaking of mixing, I always put the curing agent in first, and then the resin I pour into the curing agent. And then I always mix for three minutes minimum. And I don't usually mix with a drill anymore. I usually mix by hand. And right here I torch it. The next day, it's back to the top again. And the top, I sand off all the, the little drips from the day before. I get the whole top sanded. And right here I'm gonna put hopefully the last coat on this top. Mix for three minutes, all by hand, and then apply the epoxy. This super clear epoxy, I'm, I can highly recommend. I'm not sponsored or anything, but it really works good, and I'm, I'm not, um, not afraid to recommend it. It's been very successful for me. Just make sure the room, your temperature of your room is above 70. And then, um, you know, don't over mix it. You know, minimum of three minutes mixing good. And that's going to be the last coat on this, this whole thing. I do that. I do the top and then I also um, add another coat to the, all the ends of it. I think this is the last coat. So it took... I, I basically had to mix five, I mix epoxy five times for these two tops. Then I take polyurethane. Now this is a water-based polyurethane. I'll list it in the description. Um, it's a, I believe it's a verethane, water-based polyurethane. And there's the final product. I put five coats of polyurethane on the legs and then I epoxied the top with super clear epoxy. And that's what it looks like, kind of just a rustic, piece of furniture. You can see my uh, wood-fired stove going in the background. It's getting cold up here in the mountains. Pretty unique though. I, I kind of liked leaving the logs like as rough as they as I could, you know, without them. And there it is. That's the finished product. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Outlaw Woodworking. 
uh, what I learned making this first piece of log furniture. And I'm gonna take this upstairs and deliver it. So anyway, please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you next time. Later.